Our nature is full of life. There's a lot of species of animals we don't know about. In this video, we will discuss one of the rare turtle in the world. It's the Bacoco or Philippines Forest Turtle. There's a lot of turtle species in the world. Some are sea dwellers, some are amphibious characteristics, and some are found only on land. In today's video, we will topic the considered as critically endangered species of turtle found in Palawan, Philippines. Philippine forest turtles were first described by the American herpetologist Edward Harrison Taylor in 1920 as Heusemis platensis. He described them on the basis of two specimens, male and female, collected by Gregorio Lopez, allegedly from the swamp of Municipality of Cabalian in Southern Leyte, now known as the Municipality of San Juan. These specimens were unfortunately destroyed in World War II during the fire bombing of Manila. No other specimens were reported until 1988 when a specimen was bought from a local resident in Taytay, Palawan, believing that the turtle got there through inter-island trade. Numerous herpetologists searched Southern Leyte for other individuals. Their lack of success led to fears that the turtle was already extinct. In 2001, during an assessment of endemic wildlife in the island of Palawan, live specimens of Philippine forest turtles were rediscovered. It soon became apparent that the natural populations of the species existed in Palawan. Jess Moss and other researchers in 2004 have concluded that Taylor and Lopez may have somehow confused the type locality of the original specimens. Lopez also collected turtle specimens from the islands of Coron and Busuanga in Palawan. Specimens from Palawan may have been mistakenly exchanged with actual specimens from Leyte, which were probably Cyclemis dentata. It is now presumed that the Philippine forest turtles have never been introduced outside of Palawan and thus were not actually from Leyte. It is known as the Philippine Forest Turtle, Philippine Pond Turtle, Palawan Turtle, or the Leyte Pond Turtle. Despite the latter common name, it does not occur in the island of Leyte, but is instead native to the Palawan Island group. It is locally known as Bacoco in Cuyunan. Philippine Forest Turtles have brown to reddish brown to black carapaces that reach a length of 8.3 inches. Larger individuals can reach up to 12 inches in length, though this is relatively rare. A dorsal ridge is only present in the posterior vertebral escute or absent altogether. The front margin of the carapace is slightly too strongly separated with the marginal escutes projecting beyond the cervical escute. The vertebral escutes are broader than long. The plastron is reddish brown to black, sometimes with blotches of yellow. In juveniles, the plastron is a uniform yellow. The bridge or the hinge connecting plastron and carapace is the same color as the plastron. It is significantly smaller than the carapace and narrow at the front and back. It possesses deep notches between the projecting gular's escute as well as between the gular's and humerals but it is more distinct in the former. The skin of the legs, body, and neck are rough in appearance, being covered in tiny tubercles. The head is brown in color, sometimes speckled at the temples with light brown, orange, or red spots. A thin white to pale yellow line traverses through the width of the head just behind the openings of the ears. It may be divided at the center in some individuals. This has led to the species being nicknamed as the bowtie turtle. The line is more prominent in younger individuals. 
The upper jaw is hooked and the skin on the sides of the neck and the chin are lighter in color. The lower jaw may also sometimes possess a pair of small yellow spots on the side. The legs possess irregular enlarged transverse scales and are darker in color at the front. Four transverse scales are present on the four limbs and more at the hind limb. All limbs are webbed and possess large claws on all toes. The tail is uniformly light brown in color. Philippine forest turtles are relatively easy to recognize. They can be distinguished from all other turtles by their strongly projecting epiplastra, vertebral escutes shaped like ginkgo leaves, the absence of temporal arcs in the skull, and the aforementioned light lines behind its head. Philippine forest turtles are known only from the northern Palawan and surrounding islands. This includes the island of Dumaran, where species is still relatively abundant in creeks. Elsewhere, it is believed their populations are declining sharply, particularly in the areas of Taytay and San Vicente. Its distribution area is estimated to be less than 100 square kilometers. Philippine forest turtle populations often exist alongside other more common native turtle species, including Asian leaf turtles and Southeast Asian box turtles. Due to its rarity and its status as newly rediscovered, little is known of the life cycle of the Philippine forest turtle. From observations, however, Philippine forest turtles appear to exhibit long lifespans and high adult survival rates. Like most turtles, their sexual maturation is delayed, but they are able to mate multiple times before death. Captive adults confiscated from illegal traders were provided a large outside pool with well-planted islands and numerous underwater rock formations in Malabon Zoo in Manila. But they proved to be very shy and retiring, spending considerable time hiding under rocks both in and out of the water. They took some months to adjust to confinement. Observations indicate that they are omnivorous, favoring commercial turtle food, aquatic plants, and they have been observed hunting small fish and crustaceans. They become active in the early morning and late evening, foraging for food and moved about during the night. They were not observed to be keen on basking in the sun, but this may have been the result of being in a captive environment. The Philippine forest turtle is an enigmatic freshwater turtle species. It exerts great fascination for turtle hobbies. Due to the previous inability to locate in the wild, probable threats from the habitat loss, and potential pressure from collectors, this turtle is listed as critically endangered. Due to the susceptibility of the species to stress and the extremely aggressive territorial behavior of male individuals, Philippine forest turtles do not dwell in captivity. Nevertheless, as of 2009, a considerable number of these turtles, over 171 individuals documented in a span of four years, were to be found for sale illegally in major Manila pet markets, particularly in the main Chinese markets, where the turtles are sold cheaper. The animals are not sold openly and some of the buyers are overseas collectors. Most of the individuals were juveniles or young adults. Between 2009 to 2011, this species ranked 6th among the most commonly confiscated species in the Philippines. These animals have been collected from the mud wallows in northern Palawan and is believed that they hide during the daylight hours. Additionally, many specimens from Palawan offered for sale had small holes bored in the carapace, indicating that some at least had been held captive as pets and threatened accordingly. Local Palawan people are known to keep these animals in water through for domestic pigs, as these are supposed to bring luck for the household and the pigs although it is known if this luck is shared by the turtles. The unconfirmed existence of illegal trade of Palawan turtles to Borneo, Malaysia is also a cause of concern. 
Although some studies into their habitats have been commenced by several Philippine academic institutions, lack of funding has prevented full study, and they must be still considered endangered, especially from collecting until further res research had been carried out. Trade is banned internationally under the CITES Convention, as well as domestically under the Philippines Wildlife Act. Some 18 individuals have been donated to Malabon Zoo, north of Manila. Recent legislation in the Philippines requires pet owners and traders to register their animals with the authorities and pay for licenses to keep the more exotic pets. It is hoped that this may prove to reduce the collection of various endangered species, including the Philippine spawn turtle. The entirety of the Palawan group of islands is also a nationally protective area. Philippine pond turtle is one of the best examples how illegal pet trade can affect the nature and species. The best way to save them is to conserve their habitat reporting illegal pet owner, and registering your pet turtle to the ENR. I think this is good for today and see you on my next episode. Bye-bye!